guys, it is 1.45 in the morning and we are headed for North Carolina. 18 and a half hour drive, we're leaving right now. Epic road trip, here we come. So we're somewhere in the middle of Indiana, right? All right, I made it to North Carolina, 7.30. I left at two o'clock this morning. We're here. All right, we made it to North Carolina. We're here. Woo! Matthew Kelly, glazing pots, it's very late. I think I'll be up for like almost 24 hours when we're done with this, probably. It's gonna be awesome. What do we have? So this, this, this is actually only half of this middle stack. Like I do another set just like this right here. All right, I'm staying in an Airbnb, in North Carolina, in Seagrove on Main Street, and there is like gorgeous pottery everywhere. It's actually really sweet. Look at all that sweet pottery. Wood fired mug. We're in Seagrove. Last night we got in pretty late, but we went straight to Matthew Kelly's, started glazing some pots, because today is a very big day. So, the plan for the whole weekend is, today we gotta finish glazing and loading the whole wood kiln. So, like, a ton more pots. Matthew said last time there was 600 pots, we have plenty of pots this time. So then we start the fire tonight, and it just is kinda like a low campfire heat to just preheat everything overnight, Thursday night. And then all day tomorrow, it goes up 100 degrees an hour until we get to 2200 degrees Friday night. And then overnight, Friday night, it goes from 2200 to 2300. And then Saturday morning is like the big day where we ramp it up all the way to 2400, which is like cone. Some of the parts of the kiln get to like cone 14, which is super hot. So we're heading back over to Matthew Kelly. It's gonna be a very big, long day today. And then after we get going, then people kind of take shifts and you go in six hour shifts. Seagrove is just so cool. If you love pottery, you gotta go to Seagrove at some point. It is America's number one town for craft lovers. It's pretty crazy actually. So much good pottery here. All right, here we are. There she is. How many hours do you think it takes to load this whole thing? It normally takes like two eight hour days of loading. Such a painstaking process. It is, yeah. <laughs> what? We got the John Potter shelf right here. Matthew just loaded this guy. These are all my mugs, aren't they? Yeah, and your one planter over there. In the right, one planter. Let's hope this is a good shelf. Pot going in. Uh, if you can, all right, look at the bottom and see right. if it's high you're enough. Good. Yeah, you're good. Keep going. You're good. You got like four inch, three inches.
Sweet, those things are heavy. Yeah. I did. Whoa. Don't sneeze like that while we're doing this. So you can hand it to me and I'll get it in this position. All right, how's it feel to be loaded? Feels amazing. Super stressful until this point, then it's just a sigh of relief. So good. To start the kiln, making the fire. All right, do you have any special words to say before we do this? Uh, no, this is just one of my favorite parts because that means the kiln's loaded and we're ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Oh, here we go. Fire. Happy Firing number four. What's up guys? All right, we're in day two at North Carolina. We started the kiln last night at 11, 10 p.m. Someone was there all night last night, kind of just stoking it a little bit, and then today we start ramping it up. Let's do it! By noon, you're kiln is at like 800 degrees and so now we're ramping up and then it should be at like 2200 degrees tonight and then overnight we'll hold it basically around 22 and then tomorrow morning Saturday morning is when we ramp it up the hottest temperatures and we actually hold it up at 2400 degrees for like four or five hours or something crazy like that and then we start loading salt in the front of the kiln and it's just insane. This is like such a fun experience and it makes me want to build my own wood kiln although it is a ton of work to build a kiln and then every time you fire it, it's a ton of work too. But I think I might have enough people around me that I'm able to find some help. Super cool, super fun. I'm like a little kid in a candy store. Learning a ton and hopefully you guys are enjoying the ride.
Done. Right now we're at uh, like 1427 in temperature um, in the front primer. The back is at 1150. So a cone 012, which is about 1500 degrees, has gone down in the cone pack on the front. On the bottom, what I did is I went ahead and pushed the active dampers in in the chimney so that we could start working on that reduction atmosphere. And so as you see the kind of the black smoke starting to form there above the opening, um, that's going to help retain a little bit more of the heat in the in the wear chamber versus just sucking it all through into the and out the chimney. And also it starts that reduction atmosphere, which helps color the clay body. Uh, and so it just gives a lot more color to the clay and, and to the glazes as well to fix those. But uh, uh, yeah, we'll do this, some version of this all the way through tonight and then we'll open the whole kiln up tomorrow morning when we want to get the peak temperature. Oh yeah, there you go. Holy hotness. So yeah, you can see that cone way back in there. It's bent already. Check out all those pots. Dave's taking over for us. Check this thing out. So as I walk around this kiln right now, I can just feel a massive amount of heat. Look how big this thing is. So big and so hot. We gotta get some wood in here. So pretty much the pattern has been, we put some hardwood in, we put some of the poplar or the pine, which is, I guess not hardwood. Put the face shield down. I can feel it on my ears. Guys, we are here day three, and today is when we're finishing firing the wood kiln. So last night, I left at 10.30, and it was at 2,000 degrees, and someone came at midnight to 6 a.m. to hold it at like 2,200 degrees for the whole night. We have three of us, so me and Matt, and another girl, Erin. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this right now. Look at the flame coming out of, oh, can you even see it? Look at that. The, that's the flame coming out of the top of the chimney. Holy, we gotta go film some of that. But, so right now, it should be almost at top temperature, and then we're gonna hold it at the top temperature for four or five hours. There's been so many people helping out with this, and that's one of the most fun things about a wood kiln, is it's like this whole community thing. You can't do it on your own, you need other people. And so you, you have this wood kiln that's huge, so you have other people, room for other people's pots. Anyway, I'm sure I'll talk a lot about that because that's been one of the coolest things. Morning. <laughs> I even saw your car. I know. What's going on? Hot. How are we doing? Hot. Where are we at? How's the night been? Hot. Yeah. So how often right now are you stoking it? Uh, probably every... 2200, 2220 to 2260. I'll already fall down. There he is. Ooh. It's early. Especially if I pass out like I did last time. Oh, I can see it. Eight. Going down there. Oh, yeah. Now it's. 
piping out of there. All right, so I think we've reached the top temperature we're gonna reach, or so Matt says. So now we're gonna blow salt in here. So I don't know what that looks like, but I'm gonna find out soon. Help him with this all the time. definitely wood fire without salting, but uh, I love salt glaze, so maybe eventually I'll build a second wood kiln that I don't put salt in, but for now one's enough. <laughs> maybe I'll build a second wood kiln. You can build like a little fast fire updraft wood kiln. Yeah, yeah, not a big one. Alright, we are at the tail end now. After the salt goes in, fire it an hour more, and then it's done. <laughs> uh, and you look in there and you see the pots, they look like they are very close to being done. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we're pretty much at the very end of firing. John just put the last stoke of wood in the kiln because we fired for an hour after putting the salt in the kiln. And uh, um, I think after salting, we did go back to 2350 at least once or twice. Uh, but right now, it's only 2250 in the front. But uh, the purpose mainly was to get it heated back up and get all the excess salt burned out uh, through the kiln. And now we're getting ready to open up all the ports it's gonna get even hotter under the shed. We're gonna crash cool. It'll take about an hour and a half to uh, crash cool down to 1500 degrees and then we'll close everything up and, and let it cool slower from then on. We're all done now. It's finished. You can see how far I am away. This is probably like four feet away from the kiln and it's just heat. You can just feel the heat coming off the bricks. Now we can actually see the pots because there's not giant amounts of flame in front of it. And they all look great, hopefully. So everything's open right now so that we can fast cool it. All right, it's all sealed up. Three days we'll be back to unload it. It's at 1500 degrees right now, so basically we're cooling it as slow as possible, right? Yeah, I'm recording all the temperature readings. Guys, it is my last day in Seagrove. So I am headed right now over to Matthew Kelly's place and today is the unloading of the wood kiln. So we got the door unbricked yesterday so it could cool overnight so we'll just be able to walk in there and take pots out. It's crazy, this adventure has been amazing. I have learned so much, I have developed a very uh, deep desire to possibly build a wood kiln which is not a small commitment, you know, that's like probably two years Matthew and I have talked a lot about 
me building a wood kiln, which involves building the kiln shed, getting the concrete laid, and then getting all the brick, which is just a ton of brick, and then laying it out. And, and it has to be very meticulously planned. So, I might be doing that. What do you think? Throw me a comment down in the comments if you think that I should build a wood kiln. It certainly create a lot of good uh, video ideas. Super happy I came. Got a ton out of this trip. Um, Matthew and I have be become really good friends. And uh, I think it will definitely not be my last time in Seagrave. And I'm pretty sure Matthew will be coming to Minnesota probably multiple times in the next few years. Especially if I'm building a wood kiln. Alrighty. Let's go to Matthew. We are, I'm the only one here right now, so I can't really unload by myself, but I'm just gonna show you in here exactly what it looks like. So, look at that. So pretty much my only piece in the front here is this bowl. And it looks dope. So cool. So the, the thing about this front and why it looks kinda gray and blah is because these are just blasted with ash. So wood ash and salt just get blasted up here. And so that's why these are kind of gray and whitish. They're not quite as colorful as they'll get towards the back. You know, but for 40 hours, these are just getting wood ash like pounded on it. And then at the end, you're blowing that salt in here, which some of the salt does get all the way to the back, uh, but a lot of it gets blasted onto these pieces in front. And what's so cool about wood firing and salt firing is that the, this piece had no glaze on the outside. But now it has like a sheen, like it's glazed. So that's one of the super cool things is you don't actually have to glaze everything because all these bowls had no glaze on the outside and now they have a total finish, you know what I mean? It's, uh, man, it's, well, you don't know what to expect. That's one of the great things about wood firing is it's like, you just, I mean, you have some idea, but um, there'll be a lot of variation. There's a couple, yeah, John reached in yesterday. I'm super impatient, so I reached in and pulled these out and it, these are crazy. You cannot get results like this in an electric kiln or probably a gas kiln either. You can do gas uh, salt fired, but yeah, it's still, yeah, not, it won't be exactly the same. Sam, very excited would kind of be an understatement. <laughs> yeah, I was like, don't burn yourself. He's like reaching in the side stoke hole, like trying to grab a mug without <laughs> touching the wall. I'm not going to show every pot because that would be ridiculous, <laughs> but. You to grab to begin with. So we stand. I don't remember how I glazed it. You actually this well, don't know. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, these looks really good. So these are two these are two of mine. Not even. What are we, an eighth? An eighth of the way through? It's just so interesting. Like sometimes you can pull out a piece and you're kinda like Oh, like it's brown, you know, but then like it's just there's so much depth and interest to it That wasn't me of these carved mugs back here that I'm Ooh. super excited about. Ooh. Isn't that sweet? I'm a big fan. Look at that giant pot. <laughs> Who could make that? <sighs> Only a fool or a madman. Look at that So Whoa. I put a wad here and I put it up against the post so that we would get that oh, little effect right there. That one of these is gonna stay here with me. <laughs> that was your idea. You definitely are entitled to that. You said you gotta make some of those faceted. Oh, ones that one up. fell down. It still, still worked. Or still yeah. provided. Wow. That is just. I told you to bring <laughs> carved mugs. Oh, this one looks like a birch log or yeah. something. Dude, I'm gonna have a hard time deciding which one I want. Pretty. Sam's got the next It can be yours for $8,000. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Don't <Yeah. clink> them. <laughs> yeah. But it even feels right in your hand. It does. <laughs> somehow. It does. Somehow. Feel that. Like the thumb, like, the thumb actually, thing. Like, you that's crazy. It, it that's really crazy feels like a giant, you know, pitcher, I guess. Like, you could literally like just drink water out of that. Like if someone's like trying to drink a gallon a day, just like fill us up in the morning. There you go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the like water <laughs> challenge that people do. Um, so, but then this doesn't look like my ash glaze, so I don't know what is around there. Could just be on a different clay, maybe. Yeah, like, that's probably what it is. This is the fire. That is giant. It's probably the ones that I glazed. Oh man, the handle separated a little bit. It's nice of you to grab my pot for me out of here, Matthew. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Is grabbing the large piece. Sorry guys. You gonna show that one? Well. 
You're gonna have to go visit my YouTube channel to see Matthew <laughs> take that out of the kiln. It's nice. It's like gorgeous. Massive. All the mugs on this shelf are mine. So it's gonna be fun to unload a bunch of Mako too back there. Wow, these are those are super cool. Look at that. All right, we can unload them. <laughs> I got what I need. All right, everyone, we're clear to touch John's mugs. <laughs> These turned out sweet. This is some of John's best work right here. I've got him on a little rotating carousel. I like that matte iron. Yeah, so these are much. sweet. Uh, Very these cool. As well, little swirly guys. Woo! So this is, I'm sure, is Mako. I bet this is like probably Aurora Green over Sandstone or something. I can see it's WF15, so I can look in my notebook and tell you exactly what it is. And then sandstone. Looks like we got a little pinhole issue on that one. John definitely earned. John has definitely his... earned his space in the kiln. It says everybody except for Matthew. <laughs> uh, this is definitely a Mako glaze. I bet that this. Whoa. I almost dropped it. Is lavender mist? That is very nice. Ooh, it is. Ooh, it is. Ooh, but it's over something else, isn't it? Yeah, or I think just... I bet. I bet it's lavender mist, like with winter wood under it or something. Almost. What do you think we have here? Ooh. Well, I'm very happy so far. Nothing's like. I guess that one dripped over there a little bit, but that's plain sandstone. I'll probably refire those in my electric kiln. That's really Norse nice. Blue, maybe. Yep, I bet that's Norse blue. Really cool. Looks good. This stuff is going to be for sale April 11th. And we have coasters. Down, but I've never had a dot inside of the dot. Oh, so it's like two toned of each yeah. dot. Yeah, and it's still, and it resisted around so well that it's just amazing. It's one of Matt's planters. What? what? I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so that's super cool. This I just pulled this one out. This was one that I sent early and Mac glazed it in his rutile. And I guess it gets this purpley color in the back. Depending on the clay it's on, it'll turn purple. This is so I use this white B clay with grog that from Continental Clay. That looks really good too. That's amazing the difference that clay makes. Big old glass beads that were in this. That oh, tripped. that's cool. Wait, so these are all glass beads that you put in there when yep. it was bisking, right? Or like yeah, in the clay. Green, when it was green, yep. So these were actually pots that I glazed at my place, my my studio, and then sent them uh, after they had been bisked. So this is lavender mist in a wood kiln, carved, and then this is Norse blue. Here's yeah, this is one of mine that they glazed for me. That's those are actually quite brilliant. What are your thoughts so far? Looks pretty amazing. I'm happy. Nothing, uh, no catastrophes as far as I can count. Like just, except for the one jar that I busted. Yeah, well, <laughs> catastrophes from actually firing. Right, there was, was an probably, accident. Probably yeah, like a handful of pieces that that broke. But and that's it. And that's it. We got it all unloaded. What is that? 11:30 right now. So I was like maybe two and a half hours. Yeah. It's pretty early. Pretty quick. And uh, just a few of the favorite things. We're gonna talk about a few of our favorite things. So you got, obviously this jug turned out, whoa, giant. And it's awesome. A um, Couple of my favorite things that, you know, I really liked all the stuff that, that I did with Massey's glazes. And so this is an ash glaze over. Yeah, just my royal blue. The glaze. royal blue glaze. So I had a bunch of stuff like that. And then um, Matthew told me that I should bring some of these carved ones that I've been doing, these faceted, and they turned out really, really sweet. So these were kind of towards the front, so they have a ton of salt and ash build up on there. I, those are pretty amazing. I'm gonna have a hard time selling these guys. One of them's staying here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already told him that. 
<laughs> and then a lot of the, I mean the glazes that you do are just really really cool so this is one of my I don't even know you don't even know what this is I don't I think that must just be my ash glaze and it just got on a different clay and got good reduction or something yeah I think this is that raku clay from from uh yeah. Connell clay so what about you what came out that one is sweet yeah this is probably one of the best I've never seen this uh I do peacock flatter bowls but this one is way more true peacock than I've ever seen. Those little dots within dots. Yeah, of course, big, one of the biggest pieces I've ever made. It was definitely a great firing and uh yeah, a lot of fun to hang out for yeah. six days. Yeah, really eye-opening for me. I've been talking to Matthew pretty much nonstop about how he built this, how I would build one, like where I build one. So might be might be a summer project this summer and next summer. Maybe 2022 would be the year for me. So we'll see. Yeah, it means I'd have to go to Minnesota. Yeah probably multiple times and spend a lot of time on the phone and FaceTime yeah. <laughs> and Zoom. Uh, but yeah, my, my next sale is going to be April 11th, so any stuff that I have that I feel like I want to sell that I can part with, uh, I will have up April 11th. When's your sale? Uh, April 30th, I April 30th, yeah. so, so if you guys see any pots you liked, you might be able to get them then. So, yeah. all right. Matthew's going to do the outro here so he can... Uh, Thank you guys. See you in the next video. <laughs>